We are grateful, Heavenly Father, for that privilege to be able to come into your presence. Lord, we ask, oh God, as we start this prayer, Lord, let the full armor of God be upon each and every man, every woman. Let this full armor of God be upon us, oh Lord, in the name of Jesus. Lord, I am asking for the belt of truth for everybody who will join this prayer line. I am asking that every lie of the devil be exposed, be destroyed in the name of Jesus. Let the belt of truth remain on everyone. Lord, I am asking this morning that the breastplate of righteousness be upon everybody. That, Lord, what is in our hearts, O God, be consistent with your word in the mighty name of Jesus. I am asking this morning that our feet be covered with the preparation of the gospel of peace. May every man, every woman be covered, O Lord. May there be peace, may there be shalom in every environment where we are at in the name of Jesus. Father, we are asking, O God, for the helmet of salvation that you would cover our thought processes this morning as we come in the place of prayer. May our head be covered. May our head, O God, be covered with the the helmet of salvation. May this mind be in us that was in Christ Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus, Lord, this morning, for everybody on this prayer line, we take up the shield of faith and we extinguish all the flaming arrows of the enemy. In the name of Jesus, Father, we take up the sword of the Spirit on this prayer line and we ask that the word of God that we're going to read be our weapon of warfare in the name of Jesus. Father, we receive the grace to pray with all supplication in the spirit. Give us, O Lord, the garments of vengeance and the cloak of seal in the name of Jesus. You said where two or three are gathered together in your name, you are there in the midst of them. Lord, we thank you that you are in our midst this morning, that you are here to do great things, great things, Lord. We are expecting this morning that you are here once again, Lord, to do what no man can do. In the name of Jesus, Lord Jesus, we invite you to be at the center of our prayers. Lord Holy Spirit, we submit ourselves to you and we invite you to have your way, to take control, to move in our midst, Holy Spirit. In the mighty name of Jesus, Maria Kasundoria Bakora Basi. We bless your name. We honor you. We magnify your name. For great is the Lord and greatly to be praised. Every time we see another breaking of the day, we say thank you. We say thank you, Heavenly Father. We say thank you, the King of the universe. We say thank you, the one who is great and greatly to be praised. We say thank you, Sovereign Lord. We say thank you, hallowed be your name. May your great name be honored. May your great name be lifted on high. Blessed be your name, Yahweh of Israel. We worship you this morning. Oh, thank you, thank you, thank you, Father. Hallelujah. Our God deserves the glory this morning. He deserves the honor. He deserves the adoration. He is good all the time. We, his children, have gathered once again to express our love for him. For great is the Lord and greatly to be praised. Our God is awesome and he deserves our worship. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Holy Spirit. Good morning, everyone. Good morning, good morning. Even as we want to continue with our worship, I want us to take this prayer. The Bible says in the book of Matthew, Matthew chapter 24, when the Lord Jesus was teaching them on the Mount of Olives, you know, concerning the end times, the times that we are living in right now. He said in Matthew 24, verse 12, he says in the King James Version, he says, and because iniquity shall abound, the love of many shall wax cold. And the word for love there that is used there is agape, which is that selfless, sacrificial love of God that has been shed abroad in our hearts by the power of the Holy Spirit. When we read Romans 5, 5, we know that this is not a love that we can just generate ourselves. It's a love that comes from God. But the Bible says, because iniquity shall abound, the love of many will wax cold. Um, if you read it in the Amplified, it says, because lawlessness is increased, 
the love of most people will grow cold. So the more and more sinning goes on on planet Earth, the more the love of God's children goes cold. You know, it's not it's not unbelievers who are getting cold. It's not them who are affecting us. It's us being affected by sin. And so I want us to pray this morning for ourselves that, Lord, is there any way that sin is taking root in my life and is causing me to get cold? Is there any way that lawlessness, you know, we're not talking about necessarily breaking the laws of the land, but we mean the laws of God. Is there lawlessness increasing in us, in our families, in the church of God? Are we doing things that are contrary to what God wants us to do? Let's go to the Lord in prayer this morning and begin to ask for mercy. That may the blood of Jesus begin to 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 work and avail for us in any area where we are practicing lawlessness, any area where iniquity has taken root. Let the blood of Jesus wash us this morning. Let the blood of Jesus cleanse us this morning. Let the blood of Jesus purify us, purify our children, purify our spouses, purify our brothers, our sisters, anybody connected to us this morning. Father, we are asking this morning, we know we are living in the end times, oh God, and that iniquity is abounding. We are asking for mercy, Lord. Any iniquity in us, oh God, any pattern of sin, any pattern of rebellion, pattern of lawlessness in my life, in my husband, in my children, in my parents, in my, in my brothers, my sisters, their children, father, anyone connected to us, oh God, we are asking for mercy. Wherever sin has been increasing, wherever sin has been, oh God, taking its root in us, in our children, any lawlessness, Father, we repent of it this morning and we are asking for mercy, mercy to triumph over judgment. Mercy to triumph over judgment. Oh Lord, we pray for mercy. Let the blood of Jesus sanctify us. Sanctify us holy, spirit, soul, and body. Cleanse us in the inner man. Wash us with the washing of the water by the word. Purify our hearts, oh God. And renew a right spirit in us. Wherever, Lord God Almighty, iniquity is trying to increase in the body of Christ. Father, the church, oh God, that we are representing this morning. Wherever iniquity has increased, oh God, where there is lawlessness in the church. We stand in the gap on behalf of the whole body of Christ. And we repent of it, Lord. We repent, oh God, of iniquity. We repent of sin. We repent of lawlessness. We repent of failures, oh God. We repent by the blood of Jesus. We ask that you cleanse us. Let the church of God worldwide be cleansed, be washed, be purified. Lord, renew a right spirit in us in the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. We're going to come back to this scripture, but let's go to Luke chapter 17. Luke chapter 17. I'm going to read for us from the Amplified from verse 1. Luke 17 from verse 1. Jesus said to his disciples, Stumbling blocks, temptations, and traps set to lure one to sin are sure to come. In the King James, he says, It is impossible that offenses will not come. Offenses will come. In Amplified, it says stumbling blocks. These offenses are like stumbling blocks. They are temptations and they are traps that are set to lure one to sin. He said they are sure to come. We cannot avoid them. They are sure to come. But whoa, judgment is coming to him through whom the offenses come. It would be better for him if a milestone as large as one turned by a donkey were hung around his neck and he were hurled into the sea than for him to cause one of these little ones to stumble in sin and lose faith. I want us to pray for ourselves this morning that Lord, first of all, you're going to pray that any stumbling blocks that have been placed in your way, any temptations, any offenses, any traps that Satan and his agents have set in your path to lure you to sin. You're going to ask God and say, Lord, I receive the grace to overcome these stumbling blocks with your love. I receive the grace 
to overcome these stumbling blocks with your love. I will not be tripped up. I will not trip up because of offense. Begin to pray for yourself this morning. Lord, I receive the grace. I receive the grace to overcome every stumbling block of offense. When the temptation comes, when the trap is set to lure me into sinning through anger, through bitterness, through unforgiveness, through resentment, through hatred, I receive the grace to overcome in the name of Jesus. I receive grace to overcome every stumbling block, whatever offense, however way I've been offended, oh God. Whoever has offended me, I make up my mind this morning by an act of my will. I forgive them. I release them and I let it go by faith in the name of Jesus. I let it go by an act of my will. I let go of every offense in the name of Jesus. I refuse to be offended. I refuse to be bitter. I refuse to be resentful. I refuse to be full of hate in the name of Jesus. Whatever the stumbling block this morning, Father, whatever it is that Satan and his agents have put in our path to cause us to stumble collectively, Lord, as a, as a church, Lord, as, as, as a prayer group, we collectively make up our mind that by the love of God, we overcome the stumbling block. Whatever the trap, oh God, that had been set to lure us, we overcome by the love of God in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. I want us to use Romans 5.5 5 as we add on to that prayer. Romans 5.5, 5, the Bible says we have this hope. And this hope, it comes to us when we are able to go through the afflictions that come our way with the right kind of attitude. It says in Romans 5 verse 3, and not only that, we also rejoice in our afflictions because we know that affliction produces endurance. Endurance produces proven character and proven character produces hope. And this hope will not disappoint us because God's love has been poured out in our hearts through the Holy Spirit who was given to us. So whatever comes our way, when the stumbling block comes and it causes us a bit of pain, it is actually producing patience in us, endurance. And that patience, that endurance produces character. We never give up. We remain in hope. We don't give up. We don't give up being good. We don't give up waiting on God because we have hope. And that hope will not cause us to be ashamed or disappointed because God's love has been poured out in our hearts through the Holy Spirit. I want you to declare it over yourself and say in the name of Jesus, whatever circumstances come my way, I rejoice this morning because it has produced endurance and endurance has produced proven character in me. And this character has given me hope and this hope will not disappoint me because God's love has been poured out in my heart through the Holy Spirit given to me. God's love is in me. God's love is in me this morning. The love of God is here. The love of God is here. In the name of Jesus. I am able to love the unlovable. I am able to love even the ones who have offended me. Because God's love has been poured out by the power of the Holy Spirit. In the name of Jesus, we can love. We can love. The Holy Spirit is in us and is producing that love. Holy Spirit is producing that love in us. Holy Spirit is that channel, the channel of agape. We can walk in agape this morning in the name of Jesus. We thank you, Yahweh, because you have delivered us, Lord. You have delivered us, oh God. You have delivered us from the prison of, of offenses and stumbling blocks. And you've shared your love abroad in our hearts by the power of the Holy Spirit. We are grateful this morning. Blessed be your name, Yahweh. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. 
Amen. I, ju- I just want you to declare over yourselves, brethren, this morning and over your family and everyone you're representing this morning and just say, Lord, I thank you that the prison doors are opened. I walk out of every region of captivity. Even if that offense came when I was five years old, Lord, even now I walk out of the prison of captivity. Every region of captivity that the Satan and his agents have taken the children of God to through the, the door of offense. Father, we come out of it this morning. We walk out of the prisons, oh God. We walk out of the regions of captivity. We walk out of God, the limitations, oh God. Whatever door that the enemy had, that he could access us, oh Lord, through the back door of offense. This morning, oh, we declare that door shut by the power in the name of Jesus, by the power of the Holy Ghost. That door is shut. We seal it with the blood of Jesus and declare that our hearts are sealed by the blood of Jesus. Jesus is king over our hearts, not offense, not bitterness, not resentment. Jesus is enthroned in our hearts. The love of God has been shared abroad in our hearts by the power of the Holy Ghost. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. You know, I'm just reminded, brethren, of um, a testimony that I heard from um, Prophetess Anna Mendes Farrell. So years ago, they had been called because there was a young man. I think he was in Brazil. He was the son of a very well-known pastor. His dad was very um, effective in ministry, you know, used by God to do wonderful things. But this young man was bound. He His level of um, demonic oppression was so big that he was behaving like legion in the Bible. He had left home and was living in a cave. This young man left a house that was beautiful. They were prosperous. He went to live in a cave and he was self-injuring all the time, cutting himself. He was in a bad state. And they called Prophetess Anna and her intercession team to come and pray for him because he'd been in this terrible state, living in a cave. Can you imagine in this modern world? And when they got to praying for him, they suddenly saw that he was in a cage. He was in a, a, a cage, he'd been locked up. And when they would say to him, come out of the cage, it, it, it starts saying no. And it starts recounting the abuse that it suffered at home. And it was all sorts of abuse, including sexual abuse. It was at the time of um, when they were able to minister to him to let go, let go, forgive these people, that immediately all that demonic oppression just left and he became as well as he was before. And actually later he started to work in youth missions and everything very effective for God. I just want us to pray for not just ourselves, anyone around us, that Lord, if there's anyone who is in a prison of offense this morning, We are pleading the blood of Jesus upon them and we are asking for their release this morning. Anyone Satan got through that door of of offenses that we read in Luke 17 verse 1. Let's begin to ask Holy Spirit to release them this morning. Father, is it your spouse? Is it your children? Is it your, your neighbors? Is it your colleagues? Is it your siblings? Whoever is in a prison of offense this morning. Father, in the name of Jesus, we stand in the gap and we we open the door on their behalf, Lord. We plead the blood of Jesus upon them. We ask right now, let their heart be softened. Let their heart be softened and let them release. Let there be a release, oh God. Let there be a release this morning. In the name of Jesus, I pray for that man, that woman, that child, that young person, oh God, that Satan has locked up in the prison of offense. We are asking, Lord, for a release this morning, that you would release them, oh God, in the name of Jesus. Even those children who are in prison right now, Father, and they are offended because somebody sold them out. They are offended because their friend testified against them. We are asking, oh God, for release, release in the name of Jesus. Let the prison door of offense be opened in the precious name of Jesus. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Amen. I want us to come back to praying for ourselves as well. In Luke 17, it says from verse 2, that anyone through whom offense comes, it would be better for him that a millstone were hanged about his neck and that he be cast into the sea. 
then that it should offend one of these little ones. We're going to pray for ourselves. Are there any accusations against us in the courts of heaven where we ourselves have been the source of offense, where we've caused others to stumble? Let's ask God for mercy and plead the blood of Jesus and ask God to restore that person that we have caused to stumble. Let's ask God this morning, Father God, is there anyone that I have offended? Anyone I've caused to stumble? Any one of these little ones, oh God, that I have offended and caused to stumble? I repent of it this morning and I ask that the blood of Jesus be applied to my sin and the consequences of my sin. Let the consequences of my sin be nullified this morning by reason of the blood of Jesus and let that person who was offended be loosed and released, oh God, in the name of Jesus. May they go, oh God, into the heights you've ordained for them. They will not be limited by offense. They will not be limited, oh God, in the name of Jesus. We ask that, Lord, every offense that is standing against us in the courts of heaven be nullified by the blood of Jesus this morning. Let the consequences of that offense be nullified by the blood of Jesus. Thank you, Father, for the blood shall never lose its power, that your blood is able to cleanse us, to deliver us, to wash us. You said in Romans 8 from verse 1, that therefore now is no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus. For the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus has set us free from the law of sin and death. Therefore this morning we are free indeed. For whom the son sets free is free indeed. We are free from the accusations by the blood of Jesus. Lord, we are extending the prayer to our families. Father, our bloodlines. Lord, is there anyone in my family who has offended other people and it has become a stumbling block for our family? Is there anyone from my father's side, my mother's side, my spouse's father's side, his mother's side, all of the bloodlines I'm connected to by birth, by marriage, by relationship. Lord, I plead the blood of Jesus. Any offenses that are standing against us in the courts of heaven. Lord, we are asking the blood, the blood, the blood. Let the consequences of the offense be nullified in Jesus name. Amen and amen. Father, we receive your mercy in Jesus name. We pray. Amen. Luke chapter 17, verse 3, the Bible says in the Amplified Version, pay attention and always be on guard, looking out for one another. If your brother sins and disregards God's precepts, solemnly warn him. And if he repents and changes, forgive him. Even if he sins against you seven times a day and returns to you seven times and says, I repent, you must forgive him. That is, give up resentment and consider the offense recalled and annulled. And then the apostle said to the Lord, Lord, increase our faith. Increase our ability to confidently trust in God and in his power. And the Lord said, if you have faith in God, even as small as a mustard seed, you could say to this mulberry tree, which has very strong roots, be pulled up by the roots and be planted in the sea. And the if the request was in agreement with the will of God, the mulberry tree will obey you. So the, the apostles were saying, we need faith, Lord, to be able to do this, to keep releasing offenses. And Jesus said, even if we have faith as small as a mulberry tree, you know, we can command that root of offense to be uprooted and to go and be planted in the sea. So I want us to pray. Verse three said, pay attention and always be on guard for one another. If your brother sins, warn him. If he repents and changes, forgive him. I want you to pray this morning and say, Lord, give me spiritual sensitivity to always pay attention and be on guard. You know, if we're sensitive, we will not even be offended. We will recognize the thing that is trying to happen and we will say, look, <laughs> minus me, you are not robbing me today, devil. And we will walk away from it. Amen. I want us to pray this morning and say, Lord, give me the grace to pay attention, to always be on guard. Lord, in my, in my, in my encounters with people, the way I relate to people right now, you're going to go to church this morning. As you worship, you're going to be on guard. You're going to be always paying attention. You will not be trapped by the enemy. Begin to receive the grace. Say, Lord, I, I receive grace to pay attention. Lord, I receive grace to always be on guard. Sensitize me, oh God, this morning in the name of Jesus. I will not, oh God, be lulled into a false sense of security. Let me be able to see the works of the devil before they even enter my heart, before they even take root. May I identify them from a 
distance. Help me to pay attention. Help me to be on guard in the name of Jesus. I pray for my brothers and sisters in Christ, Lord. All of us, may we pay attention. May we be on guard. Satan will not lull us into a false sense of security in the name of Jesus. Give us the vigilance and the diligence and the alertness and the discernment in the realm of the spirit so that we can see the offense coming from a mile away and we're able to shut it down. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. And, the, and then the Bible says that if our brother sin against us, we must let it go. I want, I want you to pray this morning and say, by an act of my will, anyone who has offended me, Lord, I let it go. I let it go. I consider, Amplified says, consider the offense recalled and annulled. Recalled and annulled. Lord, I recall and annul every offense that has been oh, Lord, done against me. I consider it recalled and annulled in the name of Jesus. In the realm of the spirit, that offense will not stand against that person. They will not be imprisoned. They will be blessed. They will not be limited in the name of Jesus. I consider the offense recalled and annulled by the blood of Jesus. It will not stand against them on the day of judgment. It will not stand against them in the place of blessing. It will not stand against them, oh God, when their names are called for promotion and favor. This offense will not stand against them. I recall it and I annul it. In the name of Jesus, Oria Kasoko Dola Baragada, Zevredus Kabalegada, Zim Bregede de Bragada, we recall it and annul it in the name of Jesus, Rabababa Zogo Doria Bababa, Ragadoso Bregede Lebosia. We recall it and we annul it in the name of Jesus. Oh, thank you, Father. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. Amen. We will come back to this scripture. Let's go back to Matthew 24, Matthew 24, verse 12. The Bible said to us, I read before, that because iniquity shall abound, the love of many shall wax cold. Because lawlessness is increased, the love of most people will grow cold. Offenses are part of those iniquities that are increasing. I want us to begin to pray right now and say, Lord, anyway, my love had become cold because of offenses. You know, sometimes it doesn't happen overnight, but you just begin to become a bit hardened. And when you're hardened, it affects everything. Worship is going on. Other people are broken and they're crying and you are standing there like a pole. You're not touched because your heart has been shut down. People are receiving answers to prayer and you're standing there like the spirit of God is not there because you've been hardened by the offenses. I want you to begin to pray and say, Lord, wherever my love had grown cold this morning, Lord, fresh fire. I'm asking for you to pour again upon me, Lord, pour upon me fresh fire. Let the love of God in my heart be reactivated. Lord, reactivate love inside of me. Because even scientists have told us this, that we cannot selectively shut down emotions. If you choose to shut down your emotions towards somebody, you are actually shutting God down as well. If you say, you know what? I'm going to keep myself to myself. You are actually shutting God out as well. Lord, let our hearts be activated this morning with the fire of your love. Lord, shed your love upon us. Let your love, Lord, where my love had got colder. Lord, rekindle it. Rekindle it. Let my love be full of fire. I will not love in a cold manner, but let me love passionately. Let me love my children passionately. Let me love my spouse passionately. Let me love the people of God passionately. Everybody around me, Lord. Poor love, poor love, fresh love. In the name of Jesus, oh, let love be kindled in us. Let love be kindled in us. Afresh, oh God. In the name of Jesus, in Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. I want us to go to Matthew 5, 7 and 8, the Beatitudes. By reason of our repentance this morning, we are entitled to these blessings. Matthew 5, verse 7, I'm reading Amplified. It says, blessed, content, and sheltered by God's promises are the merciful, for they will receive mercy. 
I want you to begin to say this morning, I receive mercy. In every area of my life, I receive mercy. Mercy means God doesn't treat you the way you deserve to be treated. It means he treats you way better. Mercy, mercy. We receive mercy this morning. Lord, I am blessed. Lord, I am blessed. I am content. I am sheltered by your love. Because I am merciful, I also receive mercy. In the name of Jesus. I receive mercy. I receive mercy in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Let's join that with Psalm 102, verse 13. Because we've received mercy, you're going to ask God. The Bible says, thou shall arise. You will arise and have mercy. And put your name there. You will arise and have mercy on patience. Yes. It is the time to favor her. The set time for favor has come. The appointed time. The Kairos moment for favor has come. Lord you will arise this morning. You will have mercy on me. Have mercy on my spouse. My children. My brothers and sisters in Christ. uh, My family members. uh, Everybody praying with me this morning. You will arise and have mercy on us. uh. Now is the set time for mercy. Lord is the time to favor us. uh. Is the time to have compassion on us. uh. Is the time to show us favor and mercy. Yes. This is the set time for favor. By reason of mercy, we receive favor. We receive favor. We receive our Kairos moments throughout today. We are walking in Kairos moments. uh, Kairos moments of healing, of deliverance, uh, of transformation, uh, of promotion, uh, of lifting. uh, Oh, at Nina Masanta, a change has come. A change has come. Our Kairos moments are here. A change has come. Ah, This is our season. This is our time. By reason of mercy, we are favored. We are favored. We are favored. Kairos moments. Kairos moments everywhere around you. In the precious name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. Amen. Because we've forgiven people, we've let them go, we've repented, we are entitled to Matthew 5, 8. I'm reading Amplified Bible. It says, blessed, anticipating God's presence, spiritually mature, are the pure in heart. Those with integrity, moral courage, and godly character, for they will see God. You're going to declare over yourself this morning, I am blessed. I am spiritually mature by his grace. I am pure in heart. I have integrity. I have moral courage. I have godly character and I will see God. I will see God in this day, in this day that has dawned. I will see God. I will see him in the name of Jesus for the pure in heart shall see God. I will see God this morning. Child of God, you will see God this morning. You will see him. Whatever's been blocking you from seeing him before, it is removed this morning in the name of Jesus. The veils and the scales, they are removed. The hindering factors are removed. The demonic roadblocks and the satanic mountains, they are removed. You will see God. You will see the hand of God. You will see his goodness. You will see his favor you will see his glory you will see his power in the name of jesus you will see god you will have revelation of his power revelation of his goodness revelation of his greatness you will see god today you will see god from the north the south the east and the west you will see god wherever you're praying from this morning whichever country you're in you will see god you will see the beauty of the lord you will see his glorious presence in the precious name of jesus thank you father In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. As we begin to round up this morning, I want us to go back to Luke 17. Luke chapter 17. The Bible says, the Lord said to the apostles in verse 6 of Luke 17. If you have confident abiding faith in God, even as small as a mustard seed, you could say to this mulberry tree, which has very strong roots, Be pulled up by the roots and be planted in the sea. There are some things in our lives that have grown some strong roots. We don't want them there. But it's like they've been growing for a long time and they have some strong roots. You know, I you see sometimes it's even in the family. It's going on and on. You saw it happen to your grandma, to your mother. It's now happening to you. It has strong roots. But this morning the Lord said, If we have faith as small as a mustard seed, we could tell that 
thing that has been growing with strong roots be pulled up by the roots planted in the sea to be pulled up by the roots means you cannot go back tomorrow and find it there again because it's completely uprooted. It's gone. I want us to speak in faith and begin to declare over our situation, whatever it is, you strongly rooted circumstance. I pull you up by the roots. I uproot you. You are going to go and be planted wherever the Lord Jesus Christ is sending you to. Not in my life. Not in my family. Not in my children's lives. I uproot you in the name of Jesus. Father, we uproot every stubborn tree. Stubborn trees. Oh God, of evil occurrences. Of afflictions. Cycles of pain. Cycles of sorrow. We uproot them from their roots. And we command them to go wherever the Lord Jesus is sending them to. In the name of Jesus. They cannot remain with us. Every evil tree that is giving birth to pain, to sorrow, to affliction, to betrayal, to shame, to disgrace, to iniquity, to retrogression. We command you to be uprooted and go and be planted in the sea somewhere. Go and be planted in the sea of forgetfulness. You are not allowed here. You are not permitted here. We will not tolerate you here. We will not tolerate your presence here. In the name of Jesus, we uproot you. We uproot you. We uproot you. Be uprooted. Every stubborn situation, I approach you right now. Every disease, every infirmity, we approach you from your roots and we cast you in the sea of forgetfulness. You cannot take root here. You are uprooted in the name of Jesus. Limitations, poverty, sorrow, lack. I locate you from your roots. I approach root you from this prayer line on this prayer altar you are uprooted and cast into the sea in the name of Jesus Alika Santa every tree of bitterness every tree of heart pain of heart sorrow we locate you and we uproot you from your roots we cast you into the sea of forgetfulness in the name of Jesus and because the Lord wills it to be so it shall be so in the mighty name of Jesus, whatever tree our heavenly father did not plant in our lives, we declare it uprooted and cast into the sea of forgetfulness. Whatever God did not plant in our families, in our spouses, in our children, in our children's children, we declare it uprooted and cast into the sea of forgetfulness. In the name of Jesus, it shall be so because the word of God said so. We have full confidence in the power of God to bring it to pass. In Jesus' matchless name we pray. Amen and amen.